good. Hello everyone, welcome back to another theatre vlog. This is my last theatre trip of June and it's very cute because I'm actually going back to the first theatre of this month and that is the other palace. I'm going to see another workshop there. I'm going to see the workshop of Bonnie and Clyde and I'm very excited and I'm also running a little bit late so it's time to go. production at the studio space at the other palace which if you watch my videos you know it's one of my favorite theatres and I love 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 what they are doing at the moment with the work in progress series so I believe this is the last show that they're doing again if you watch my videos you might have seen that I went to the production of Heathers at the start of the month so that's Heathers the musical and then I believe they had two new British musicals um, I think one was called Joy Bubbles and the other Dr. Feelgood and sadly because I've just been so busy this month I have not been able to go and see those but I did manage to see Bonnie and Clyde which I'm really glad about because it's a musical that I've obviously heard of um, I actually have heard a couple of songs from it but sung in concerts like out of show context never have I seen a full show of it because I don't believe it's been in the UK I could be wrong there so the whole premise of the work in progress shows is that the creative team of these shows can go right back to the beginning and have the very basics of their show, rewrite things, play around, and then put it in front of a public audience to gain opinion. Obviously I was quite prepared going into this production of Bonnie and Clyde, having seen their Heather's workshop, like knowing what to expect and how it was gonna go. However, it was really nice that Paul Taylor Mills, the artistic director, I think he is, of The Other Palace, came up before the show to say that and clarify it to the audience. And as I showed you in the Heathers vlog, they're using the same app to gain feedback from the audience, which is awesome, and I need to do that after filming this. So it'll be just a questionnaire of kind of what we thought about the show, if this part of the show made sense, and just general things like that to gain feedback from the audience to then help in reworking the show for hopefully a future production, which is really exciting, and I love that. I love that actual people, actual audience members and theatre goers are kind of having a say in what shows are going to be like. It's really giving the power to the people and I love that. <laughs> when Bonnie and Clyde was announced, I didn't book tickets immediately, I'll have to be honest. I booked the Heather's tickets immediately, but mainly because I knew that they were gonna sell so quickly. And as I mentioned, it's been a really busy month for me, so I was concerned that I might not be able to fit seeing Bonnie and Clyde in. Thankfully, I was able to, and I booked very shortly after the cast was announced because, oh my goodness, it was such a good cast. So I'm gonna quickly run through that casting. Um, so we had Evelyn Hoskins as Bonnie, Jamie Moscato as Clyde, Sam Frode as Ted, Joshua Dever as Buck, Rebecca Traherne as Blanche, and then the only other people that I knew were Amy Booth Steele, and she played a couple of roles, and Rebecca Locke, who also played a couple of roles. And it was really nice because Rebecca Locke and Jamie Moscato did the Heathers workshop as well, so it was nice that they did another one. Um, and it was it was a really solid cast. I mean, the, the, the names in this cast are amazing. I am obsessed with Rebecca Traherne, if any of you know me or know 
But I'm saying that, I haven't seen her in a long time, which I felt really bad about, but she's just incredible. And she recently won an Olivier Award and I'm so proud of her. Also, Andrew Lloyd Webber was in the audience and I really tried to pluck up the courage to say hello and I just, I couldn't. I'm just chicken out completely. But that was really cool. I don't think I've ever seen Andrew Lloyd Webber like in person that close. Honestly, he was four seats away from me. It was crazy. Um, but that's always exciting to go to a performance when you know someone like that is in the building. So the story of Bonnie and Clyde, I didn't even realize was a true story until today when I saw Bonnie and Clyde, which is just mad. How did I not know that? I mean, I guess I'm a British person and it's an American story, so maybe that's why, but I just can't believe that I didn't know that it was real, it happened. What? It's definitely a fun concept for a musical and I don't really want to spoil the plot too much. Essentially, it starts off with two young kids, obviously one is Bonnie and one is Clyde, and through the song that they do, which I do not know the title of, um, but they are saying what they want to be kind of when they grow up. Um, kind of a Matilda reference there. So Bonnie, she wants to be an actress and Clyde wants to be like Al Capone. He wants to be an outlaw, essentially. And that is obviously the theme for the entirety of the show. The thing that absolutely blows my mind about these work in progress productions is the fact that they've only all been in the room together for a week. This is madness. And obviously during the show they have their books on them, they have their scripts with them, so if they do need them they can look at that and it's fine to be fair, you you kind of forget that the books are there and I got to see Rebecca quickly afterwards which was really nice and as I said to her, I said I'd rather that they all had the books there so if they screw up they know what line they've got next or what they have to do next rather than it just being awkward and then floundering trying to find or trying to remember what their line is. Obviously with it being in the studio and it being a work in progress it is a very stripped back production. Um, they don't have much in the way of props or obviously any sets or anything and what was interesting about this one compared to when I saw Heather's. At Heather's the director sat and like cued in the scenes. I don't know if that's the right phrase but he would introduce the scenes and say like such and such character and such and such character are at this location and for this show they didn't do that it was all just the performers on stage doing the show which was really interesting and it worked it was fine both productions it worked that was just an interesting observation from me having seen two work in progress productions that just I found interesting even though the production was minimal I could totally imagine like the scenes and what they would kind of do in a full production. Um, for example, they use guns a lot in the show, so for guns they were like this, and the one thing that they really did use was torches. They used that a lot, which was really awesome. At the very start, they used it to emulate a car and like car headlights, and then um, at some point, like there are police officers using torches just as torches. It's just crazy that even though it was a work in progress, you can just imagine how it would be on a full stage. I think that's a really big testament to the cast and the team that were working on this to kind of give you as much of it as they could in this version. As I briefly mentioned, the cast were really strong, really good. It was so nice to see Jamie and Rebecca Locke again in another show. Rebecca Locke is so funny. Oh my goodness, she had me cracking up in the show today. Obviously Rebecca Traherne, I adore her. Don't think I need to say anything else. Jamie Muscato, it's another quite um, dark character for him. Obviously he played JD and Heathers. A very kind of different kind of darkness though with this. But him and Evie worked really well together. And uh, her voice is just stunning. So such a lovely voice i really i really enjoyed watching them together yeah i had a really good time seeing bonnie and clyde and i'm really glad and for both of these shows and for the other two that i sadly didn't get to see as well i'm really excited to see what the future holds for all of them and i definitely recommend if you can when more workshops are announced at the other palace because i'm sure they're going to be that you go to one of them if you can because it's a really exciting experience to be part of one of the first audiences for a show like this and to be a part of it and to give your feedback it's exciting and I love that it's nice to be involved in theatre in this way it's very unique if you've been to see one of the workshops at the other palace recently I'd love to know what you thought of them do share your thoughts in the comments below 
And if you've enjoyed this video, I'd love it if you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and you'd like to see more videos from me. I make a lot of theatre content, so if you enjoy theatre, hopefully you'll enjoy my channel. I hope you're doing really well and I will see you very soon. Bye!